the number of heroin overdose deaths nearly quadruple. Also, more likely than dying from a fall, drowning, or gun assault. He was tired of running. He didn't want to wake up the next morning and worry and wonder and scheme about where his next fix was going to come from. The National Safety Council found Americans' chance of dying from an opioid overdose has increased to one in 96. So that is compared to one in 103 likelihood of dying in a car accident. As a person, Brandon was this big-hearted, bright, shining light of a person. To America's heroin epidemic, there are some alarming new numbers out from the CDC showing a dramatic rise in the heroin epidemic in this country. The overdoses that we're seeing on the street are from heroin or synthetic opioids, like fentanyl, uh, car fentanyl. He just looked up at me and and told me thank you. And when I asked him for what, he said for not giving up. He said thank you for He said, thank you for being the warrior that you are. He said, because my other friends that I left behind today, he said, their moms could care less. He said, and if they do care, they feel helpless and they don't know what to do. Brandon was a football player in high school. He was a six foot two big burly kid that loved to play sports and he sustained a football injury to his back that was catastrophic to him physically. And he was benched for his senior year of high school. And throughout that time, he was going through doctor's appointments, trying to determine what the injury was, the extent of the injury, the source of the pain, and a remedy and a treatment plan. But for the first year of Brandon's treatment plan, it did include a lot of painkillers. After that first year, then he was weaned off of the pain medication. He was issued a smaller and smaller dose each visit, and we were going monthly at that time. He, he had started physical therapy, and he was, he was improving. And I thought, that, I thought that as he stabilized off of the pills, that he was off of the pills. I didn't realize that he had developed such a dependency and that his, his brain was telling him that he needed those pills, he needed that medication and that he was finding an alternative source to obtain them. And it became harder and harder for him to get the pills from whatever source he was getting them from. And then at that point, he started to turn to other substances and someone recommended, this is a lot cheaper, this is the same, this is just as effective, this, this will help you out. And it was presented to him in a friendly manner, even though it wasn't a friend and Brandon tried heroin for the first time. And he said that after that, that there was no going back. I knew for about two years that something was wrong and I was in denial. I didn't want to believe it. I just didn't want to give, I didn't want to give it a name. I didn't want it to have a face because anything that I'd ever heard or known of heroin, it was completely defeating. Brandon got up and he went to work. He went to lunch, he went back to work, and then when he left work, he went to an ATM and he drove to a place to meet a guy to buy some heroin. The girl behind the desk immediately knew who I was and they walked me back to this room and they, no one prepared me. I had no idea what condition my son was in but I walked into a little room in the ER and my son was laying in a hospital bed on life support. He was, he was on a ventilator. He had just tubes and wires coming out of him everywhere. And I prayed on it and I prayed over it and I just begged to please not have to do it. 
to not have to be the one to tell them to turn those machines off, to not have to make that call. Because when you give a child life, the last thing, the last position that you want to be in is the one where you have to take it away. And I went back to the hospital after church on Sunday and I met with a representative from Sharing Hope. They coordinate organ and tissue donations. And the one thing that I wanted to ensure was that even though Brandon's life was ending, that he could, that he could pass life on to someone else, that he could give the gift of life to someone else. I just kept thinking, how can, how can my son live on? What decisions can I make today and now that will keep a piece of him here? And the next day, Monday, Brandon was still laboring really, really hard. Just after 12 o'clock on Monday, Brandon, Brandon herniated and all of his vitals spiked. And then his body just started to rest and the machine started to work for him and the redness in his skin went away and his chest wasn't distended every time he, he would breathe and his heartbeat slowed down and, and he, his whole body just became very peaceful. And And he died right there in front of me in that bed. The city has, has started an initiative called Paths to Recovery, uh, wherein within 48 to 72 hours of being notified of an overdose, we will make every effort to meet with the victim of the overdose as well as the family of the overdose to share with them resources uh, that are available to them. The goal of this initiative is to, to show pathways to recovery and to save lives. We have to do something to get ahead of the situation, to get ahead of the, to try and get ahead of the problem now and incarceration is not always not the answer to to every drug related problem these individuals suffering from use to substance use disorder need to know that there are resources that they're not stuck in an endless cycle that there there's resources available to them i think it's imperative it's necessary that we start an initiative like this if we don't we're going to continue to see the number of overdoses stay the same or elevate um, and risk lives. More people than not that, that are suffering from substance use disorder are looking for a way out. They just sometimes can't find it or not ready. Also part of our initiative is the drug take back box, which is located in the lobby of City Hall. A anyone open to the public, anyone can come in and drop off unused or unwanted prescription medications. The more the word gets out, the more information we can share with the public uh, and those experiencing it, the more assistance we're getting and the, the more willing others are to step up and help. You're not alone. There's unfortunately countless numbers of people who are experiencing the same problems and the good side to it is there's countless people who have experienced it in the past and have, have beat it or work every day toward beating it. They're, you're not alone is, the, is the, the bottom line. There is no mother, there's no loved one who is facing the monster of addiction in their life that has enough information, that has enough education and knowledge. Because it's not just going to be any one agency or any two or ten agencies that's going to cure this, that's going to fix it. It's going to be all of us coming together for the people that we love that struggle with addiction. 